This week, I take the nuclear option to clean this lens, my Carl Zeiss Jena F420 millimeter Flectagon. Was it a success or was it a disaster? Keep watching to find out. Hey everybody, thanks for checking in once again. Well, now you may remember last week we were talking about shooting damaged lenses and this was one such. This lens was really dirty and it had a lot of scratches on the front element. It looked like it had been blasted with sand. There was countless little marks and scratches on this front element. So I've been thinking for a while to clean and restore this lens and try and get those markings off that front element. The only way I could think of to do it was to actually grind the glass back a little bit with a glass polishing compound. I knew that would take the coating with it, but my reasoning was that a clean lens, even uncoated, is better than a coated lens that's full of scratches and disaster on its from Element. Now you may have seen this lens on this show before, I have had it quite a while and I've used it as well. I, I used it when it was in poor condition, more in hope than anything else. I, I, I knew it wouldn't really come to any great success, but I did want to see what it could do. And what it could do was pretty flipping awful. Everywhere had a lot of bloom there was a lot of light leakage from bright areas into dark areas it had a very muddy look and generally it really was a disaster now whatever i did i couldn't really get anything nice out of this lens i could process the results but that's a lot of bother and the lens is still a subpar lens and i wanted it to be nice so i set to work grinding i took out the front element um, I got an electric drill and I polished this thing within an inch of its life. Now, you do have to be uh, quite careful because the curvature of that element, you can see the curvature there, that clearly is one of the things that makes the light behave in a particular way and allows this lens to work properly. So I had to be very careful not to alter the curvature of that lens, of the surface of that lens too much. I may have altered it slightly by a micron or two, but I didn't think that was going to make much difference. And uh, I think generally the curvature is preserved. You do have to work quite hard when you're doing this job because glass is a fairly hard substance. It's not the hardest of substances, but it's fairly hard. Um, within the the um, polishing powder is a thing called an element called um, or a compound called I think it's cerium oxide or ceruleum oxide. I'll put the I'll put it on the screen for you so I know I've forgotten exactly the name, but it's harder than glass obviously, and uh, you know you just grind and grind and grind, and uh, eventually I ended up with a lens that had a clean front element. It did take a long time. I did have to use plenty of elbow grease while I was doing it. It really wasn't an easy job. Um, but in another way, it was easy. All I had to do was keep grinding. I, I had to go on both sides because both sides were dirty. The front uh, side was by far the dirtiest and nastiest. And I think you can perhaps see here, I've been waving this thing around in front of you for a while. Let's see if we can focus on it. You can perhaps see here that this is now a very clean front element. It's got little, if any, coating left on it. The grinding took most, if not all of the coating, but actually that front element is now very clean and so I was really happy about that. I thought, gosh, you know, this has actually worked. I can't believe it. And uh, I was uh, anticipating that as soon as I 
put this lens back together, I would get some beautiful shots out of it, just as Mr. Zeissiana intended all those years ago. Well now, was I disappointed or was I not? I'll tell you now, I was very disappointed because the images that came out of this lens after I'd cleaned it were actually no better than those that I'd made with it before I'd cleaned it. But perhaps marginally, perhaps very, very marginally, very, very fractionally better. But, you know, there was very, very little in it. I'd still ended up with a load of muddy, horrible looking shots that just like they looked like they'd had a, I don't know, a load of mud and mush thrown all over them. And there was a lot of bloom off any bright object, gave a load of bloom. Um, an interesting effect, sure, but it really wasn't meant to be there. And any light area against any dark area was an absolute disaster. This lens just would not handle light properly, internal reflections, um, you know, going through a load of, gosh, goodness knows what, I don't know. It became clear to me that there was more mush and dirt in this lens than I could get to. So I thought to myself, well, I'll have a, I've had a good go. I've tried, I've polished it. Um, I'll make a video and explain that sadly the nuclear option has been a failure. But about 20 minutes ago on this nice quiet Sunday afternoon, just before I was about to make this video, I looked here at the rear element and I saw that this little tiny teeny weeny squidgy little element here had a whole bunch of haze and cloud and oil and goodness knows what was on that. So I thought, well, let's clean that. It can't do any harm. You never know it might make some improvement. Now, the way you get that out is there are four concentric rings there and you actually um, loosen the second of those concentric rings and that element comes out nice and easy. Cleaned it up. There wasn't really much on it. I think maybe it was a bit of oil haze or something because this lens has a sticky aperture, it's stuck open at f4, that's the next job I've got to do in it. So I'm wondering if maybe somebody's poured a load of lighter fluid or oil or something in it, trying to get that aperture moving. Well now, I cleaned that element and I thought to myself, okay, I'll just have a try. You never know, it might have made a marginal improvement. My goodness, was I surprised. This lens shot probably not like the day it left the factory, but it shoots now like, what can I say? Like a proper lens. All the haze is gone. I couldn't believe it. That tiny little element there was causing all that final residual haze and mush. It may even have been causing most of it, although the very, very dirty, nasty front element will not have helped and that won't have been doing the images any good. So it did need a clean. I'm not sorry I cleaned that. But I do think that most of the difficulty was caused by this rear element, which had some haze on it. It wasn't even fungus, um, no fungus, no dust, um, nothing, f you know, that, that years and years of use would cause just some haze, I think from maybe from lighter fluid. I don't know, I'm just guessing. But I've now got a lens that really works nicely. I don't know if it works as well as the day it was made. It doesn't have quite that coating on there that it did when it was new because I ground it off, but it does have coating on all the other elements. This surprisingly is a multi-coated lens. So we've still got plenty of coatings there doing their job. Contrast is massively, massively improved. I, I can't begin to tell you the improvement in contrast this lens has, uh, has. So I'll let the images speak for themselves and I'm sure you'll 
agree. Contrast is incredible. Colour. The CZJ colours are coming through now. Yeah, those CZJ colours are really coming through nice and strong now. And those are colours like nothing else. Even without its coating, this lens makes astonishing colour. And the limited amount of shooting I've done with it shows me that it's not quite as contrasty as, say, a Pancola 51.8 but it does have some strong contrast and it does bring through those rich, beautiful tones that no other lens seems to be able to do. CZJ have this unique ability for colour and I really like the colours that are coming out of this newly cleaned lens. So it's all clean, there's no dust in it, there's no haze in it, it's got strong contrast, it's got strong colour. And I'll tell you what, I couldn't be happier. This is a success story. I have tried repairs on lenses that just didn't work out. And I've even ruined lenses trying to repair them. Luckily, only very cheap ones, but I have just, you know, completely ruined them. This one is a success story and I am so pleased. I'm gonna go out and shoot this. I'm gonna keep hold of this lens. This lens is now a keeper. I am glad to say. There's another little bit of restoration work needs doing on it, which is the aperture mechanism. This is an exact amount model and it's got some fancy thing here for, I don't know, holding the aperture open or something. I'll have to read up on it. I did used to know, but I've forgotten. Um, so I'll have to unstick the aperture. CZJ lenses are well known for getting stuck apertures and this one seems to have followed its brethren down that route naughty lens but we will fix it up and uh, this hopefully fairly soon is going to be a lens that i can uh, put on a shelf with all my other lenses and use just as a normal ordinary lens and i'm really pleased about that and it does show you it does show you that you can achieve success stories with cleaning lenses so again i'm not a lens technician um i've got a bit of experience well quite a lot of experience with amateur motor engineering but i'm certainly am not a lens technician i do it little bit by little bit and if it's too much i've learned from bitter experience don't go any further but if it's light dismantling only, you can restore a lens. And it doesn't matter whether that lens is one that's fairly common and cheap or whether it's one like this that is, uh, you know, more sought after and valuable. They can all be cleaned and they can all be restored if they need only that little bit of light restoration. So a really pleasing success story. So I guess that's it from me for this week. And uh, it remains only for me to give my sincere thanks to all subscribers for your subscriptions. Many, many, many thanks to you. Many, many, many thanks also go to patrons, patrons old, patrons new, without whom this channel could not do what it does in the same way so many many heartfelt thanks to you also if you'd like to support this channel if you think yeah this guy's doing interesting stuff he's keeping the old gear alive and showing us how to do it also we'd like to support that if you want to do that well you can do it really easily over at www.patreon.com forward slash xenography and you can do that for as little as only one of your earth dollars per month that would be appreciated many thanks for watching and please do all those youtubey things like subscribe ring the bell etc and i will see you next time if you're not doing anything terribly pressing at this time for some more xenography Cheerio all.